Typography is the art of arranging letters in blocks to make written language legible and appealing when displayed. Across the ages, people have found ways to get the word out cheaply and efficiently and in great quantities. Today, the practice has primarily become digital and the definition has expanded. Contemporary artists Tracy Emin, Barbara Kruger, Christopher Wool, and Oscar Murillo all use typography as an essential part of their photography and painting. Typography is also the work of graphic designers, art directors, manga artists, and comic book artists. So what if we were to add a bit of extra depth to the standard two-dimensional art form? In this project, Make your statement stand up and stand out. Start with a short statement that is personally meaningful. In a sketchbook, write the phrase in various typeface styles. Choose one option to sketch at scale on a sheet of graph paper. Keep in mind that there should be a balance between legibility and creative expression. Use the grid as a guide to align the letters and choose appropriate spacing. Transfer the final design to a piece of thick 30-ply chipboard. To make the letters, I've cut about a dozen half-inch strips of 15-ply chipboard. The exact amount and depth of the strips may vary by design. Fold, bend, cut, and join the strips to resemble the sketched type. Use tape to attach the letters. And the cuts don't have to be straight. You can always make them angle backwards or forwards. And I'm gonna add a little extra dimension to my A here. And if you're having trouble figuring out how to attach the strips to make a certain shape, we do have a very informative attachment technique video as well. Continue with all of the letters, completing the phrase. When all of the letters are taped to the base, use small strips of plaster cloth to cover the entire piece. Wet the plaster strips one at a time. Smooth between your fingers to activate. Use your fingers, a wooden modeling tool, or an old paintbrush to get into those hard to reach corners. Go all the way to the edge of the piece. Any excess can always be trimmed after it's dried. The rough texture of the plaster can be smoothed out by rubbing a slightly damp finger over the plaster cloth. Continue working across the piece until it is entirely covered. When the piece is fully dried, the rough, textured plaster strips can be left white for a dramatic effect or they can be painted. For hundreds of free videos like this, along with printable lesson plans, complete with step-by-step -step instruction and a full list of materials, visit dickblick.com slash lesson plans.